Hi, I'm Dr. Messina. Today we're going to be going over the short and long-term side effects of the COVID-19 mRNA vaccinations. When we talk about the short-term side effects, we're going to be discussing complaints that both patients and test subjects had after receiving the first and second dose of these vaccines. The first dose tended to be less severe. The second dose, the side effects seemed to be slightly more profound. However, in just about every incidence, they were short-lived, meaning they started sometimes in the same day as the second vaccination, sometimes the next day, and in general, all had resolved within the first three days, the majority of them resolving after the first 24 hours. The complaints were pain at the injection site, followed by headache, fatigue, fever, chills, and nausea. Those were the top complaints. Now, when we get to the less common complaints, we had facial swelling, Sometimes patients developed a rash at the injection site that could look quite frightening. It may or not have been itchy as well. And on occasion, it disappeared in a few days and reappeared in another spot on the body. However, in all the events, it resolved spontaneously. There was also the potential for patients who had facial fillers, especially the hyaluronic acid type of fillers, such as Juvederm and Restylane, for them to swell after receiving the mRNA vaccinations. The reason for that is unclear, but again, it resolved quickly on its own. We also have the situation of the allergic reactions. They're significantly less common than the group that we just mentioned. And people became afraid because it made the headline news that some people developed anaphylaxis, which is a life-threatening allergic reaction. However, the patients that developed anaphylaxis already had a history of severe allergic reactions and carried EpiPens with them. So if you're in that category of patient, it would be wise to discuss with your primary care physician whether or not you should receive the vaccination at all. Further down the line, we have the rare events of thrombocytopenia, low platelet counts. Again, this was also in the news because of the few cases of thrombocytopenia, of which I believe as of this date was three. One, a physician in Florida died because of the thrombocytopenia, which is very rare in itself. But thrombocytopenia is an extremely rare incidence to occur after these vaccinations. Most of the time, you're going to get the pain in the injection site, the headache, the dizziness, the fatigue, and maybe the fever and the chills. And again, they usually self-limited and usually resolve in the first 24 hours. The fact that we get these side effects is actually a good sign. It's a sign that your immune system is being stimulated and in all likelihood, you're gonna make a nice level of antibodies that should be protective against this viral illness. Now let's talk about the long-term complications. The long-term complications are unknown. And that's not something you're going to hear from a lot of physicians on the internet. We just don't know because we don't have long-term studies. They have been dabbling with mRNA vaccinations for some cancer treatments over the last decade or so. However, we've never actually had a vaccine, specifically an mRNA vaccine, to target a specific protein on a virus. So it's new territory. Patients will say, well, this was rushed. Well, dire times require dire measures. And when we have a situation where we have a virus that's fairly contagious with a fairly high case fatality rate, and we have a medication, or a vaccine in this case, that is showing promise at giving you an antibody response to curtail this viral illness, and the studies are pointing to it being very safe and effective, then emergency use authorization is granted 
and we get these vaccines out into the general public. And it's been done before. If you look at the polio vaccine in the 50s, we had mostly children getting a very bad neurological illness every spring. And if you were lucky, you just had a few neurological impairments. If you were unlucky, you actually had respiratory failure and wound up in an iron lung. And those first vaccines that came out, there was a lot of uncertainty, including will they cause polio? But it had to be done because we were in dire times, very similar to what we have now. However, in my opinion, just using basic medical knowledge, the fact that the mRNA is destroyed shortly after getting into the cell, and the fact that the mRNA cannot get into your nucleus of the cell and interfere with your DNA, and finally, the fact that they believe these vaccines are not going to be a one-shot less for the rest of your life vaccine, and that you're probably going to need booster vaccines and that it might wear off in as short as six months, makes me believe that the effects of this vaccine should not be that great. So I don't think we're going to be seeing any catastrophic side effects from these vaccines in the years to come. So now let's discuss people who get COVID viral illness. With the COVID viral illness, we don't have to speculate. We already know that you're going to have a problem if you get this disease. Basically, everybody has come out with some kind of a side effect. Some could be mild, such as having nightmares or difficulty sleeping, but some could be quite severe. After recovering from the COVID-19 viral illness, patients have experienced respiratory distress, shortness of breath, pulmonary injuries, cardiomyopathies, or a destruction of some of the cardiac tissue, neuropathies of the nervous system, renal failure, they've developed dementia. It was recently found that up to one third of the patients who've recovered from COVID-19 have neuropsychiatric deficits from confusion to depression to neurological deficits. Some have increased risk of having brain hemorrhages, cerebral infarct or strokes, and advancing dementia six months or greater after recovering from COVID-19 viral illness. They also found that patients that had mild or even asymptomatic forms have been coming down with these complications such as chronic fatigue, brain fog, rash development, Children who are asymptomatic and or had mild disease have developed a vasculitis, an inflammation of the cardiovascular system. So nobody really comes out unscathed. Yes, it could be minor. Could just be having bad nightmares, but there could also be major changes too. Therefore, the risk of taking the vaccine is way outweighed by the benefits of taking the vaccine, avoiding getting the viral illness, and avoiding these complications from the viral illness.